there are still a lot of hardcore prejudices that are out there. We can't have a community where some part feels less than fully human. And that's what we have in this community. You can be fired just because you're gay or lesbian. It's perfectly legal in Jacksonville for my boss to fire me for being gay. All the things that go into having a great career, all the blood, sweat, and tears, and then all of a sudden it's ripped from you because of who you sleep with. We look like a joke. We look like an absolute joke. It is a sad commentary if we can't pass an ordinance that says every one of our citizens deserve equal rights. All we have to do is add six words. Actually, for decades, hardly anybody ever gave much thought to the six words. Certainly not in the context of Jacksonville's HRO, the Human Rights Ordinance. Virtually every city has one, put simply, a law prohibiting discrimination. Barely anyone realized Jacksonville's HRO did not include the six words. Barely anyone knew protections for gays and lesbians were not there. Even members of the gay community didn't know that they weren't protected. Everyone just assumed. Yep. Even John Delaney, Jacksonville's mayor for eight years. When you were mayor, you were unaware that this existed. Yeah, it was an eye-opener to me to discover that you could fire somebody just for being gay. Terminated by your boss. Persons like myself could be fired from a job. Turned away by a landlord. We could be denied housing. Tossed out of a store. We could be asked to leave a public accommodation or denied service. A public accommodation? That's almost any place. If you go to a restaurant, to the movie theater, to ride a city bus. I could be asked to leave because I am a lesbian. Permitted, authorized, completely legal within the city of Jacksonville today because the HRO overlooks those six words. In effect, telling gay and lesbian people that they really aren't equal here in this city. And so a boss or landlord or shopkeeper who even thinks you're gay or lesbian or bisexual or transgender and wants you out can kick you out. Nothing you can do. Absolutely nothing. And when I share that with my friends, gay or straight friends, when we're eating out at a nice restaurant in the town center and I say, you know, technically the waiters or the wait staff here could deny to serve me or they could ask me to leave. And my straight married couple friends will go, you're kidding, you've got to be joking me. No, it's very true. Knowing that that could happen and that I would have no recourse just amazes me. So people said, what? Jacksonville doesn't have this? The omission definitely seemed a quirk, a glaring one. After all, Jacksonville's HRO covers everybody else. Age, race, sex, disability, national origin, marital status, religion. Everything but sexual orientation and gender expression? Well, pretty much so, yes. Peculiar, too, that other U.S. cities, over 200 of them, routinely provided protections for gays and lesbians years, even decades ago, while Jacksonville deferred silent, static, and increasingly insulated. Which is why today we stand virtually isolated. Today, the largest city in the U.S. that has not passed some sort of protection for its gay citizens is Jacksonville. I think it's a very sad situation for our city to be in. But in spring 2012, none of this was yet any big deal. Just innocent oversight, most everyone thought. Nothing intentional. Just Jacksonville, true to form, dithering. Besides, with a bill finally in front of city council to fix the HRO, adding those six words appeared an easy lift. And then, the city council hearings. And the first question out of his mouth was to ask me if I considered myself a male or female. My reply to him was the last time I looked, I was a woman. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. I felt like I was hearing that a close relative had just died. That was the shock that came over me. It was just one of those defeats that I don't ever want to feel again, ever. It was really Jacksonville at its absolute very worst. I got correspondence from colleagues all over the country that took note of this, usually expressing a great deal of surprise. We caused damage to our community through that vote. When you 
take a class of people and say, I don't want to provide them equal protection under the law. I think that's wrong. Some of us will have to come along, you know, kicking and screaming a little bit. The six words never appeared before council again. Jacksonville's gay community continued unprotected. Now, three years later... Jacksonville is behind. It continues to make Jacksonville look bad. It seems to me so utterly pointless. How does Jacksonville look to the rest of the country? Backward. I think we look backward. Intolerant, not willing to accept people. It certainly doesn't make Jacksonville look like a progressive place. I suspect some in our community kind of like that. <laughs> Today, in 2015, Jacksonville's business community, bonded in support of the six words and horrified by council's vote, remains mortified. It's a black eye for Jacksonville. And to those movers and shakers who market the city, those looking to expand the local economy, whether chamber officials or corporate presidents, the excluded six words persist, an exclusively embarrassing annoyance. Right now, it doesn't look like we're positioned for the future. And investors, which is what we need downtown, need to believe we're committed to that vibrant future. But convincing them now considerably more complicated. Tricky business, really, with those investors mindful of the HRO debacle. And much like a diminished, de-energized, and often deserted downtown, the missing six words, more than ever, make Jacksonville look... Backward. There's that word again. And a shame because... Jacksonville is, has a lot of great attributes, a lot of great attributes, and it's on everybody's short list. With plenty to brag about. Exceptional climate, moderate taxes, near beaches, near Disney, significant virtues spiked with the sultry magnetism of a still exotic Florida. Even today considered a wonderland compared to some places. But that council vote... It made a big statement about Jacksonville, and it's not one of inclusion, obviously. And that hurts all of us. Preston Haskell, longtime civic leader, philanthropist, and founder of the Haskell Company, now in its 50th year. It will not put us in the forefront of the communities we seek to be comparable to. Tolerance and inclusiveness are among the very top attributes that any person or corporation seeking to come to a city will look for. We want to be able to say that Jacksonville is an open city. Bill Bond, longtime civic leader, Jacksonville native, and veteran bank executive. When we go out to recruit companies, they may be reluctant even to put us on the list. So we may never know what we lost. That's right. This could be a deal breaker? It could be. Is it a deal breaker? For some CEOs it is. For some CEOs it is. Audrey Moran, longtime civic leader and a senior vice president, Baptist Health. Corporations want to be sure that they're bringing their people, their employees, to a community that's going to embrace them. Any CEO can't with a straight face say Jacksonville's the place right now. Indeed, right now, even with all the good things happening here, just try to pitch the city to outsiders. Their comments are, why on earth haven't you been able to get this done? Try to persuade corporations to move here? major companies are going to have an issue with that policy not being in place. Trying to prevent the competition, all with gay-friendly HROs, from slamming us. I can't help but believe that they will bring it up. It's just human nature when you're competing with somebody to say, well, Jacksonville's a fine city, but... Try to pluck new talent from elsewhere or just preserve talent already here. In our company, it's been an issue in attracting new talent here. It's an issue in keeping talent here. We have prospective employees come and we've, we've talked about this. And the response I get is, well, you can protect me in this job, but I have to go home at night. And I have to go out to have movies and have dinner, and uh, I have to live in a community. And you can't do anything for me there. And they're right about that. There's a reason why almost every major city has already crossed this bridge, because it's the right thing to do. Laws can't change attitudes. Only the good Lord can change our attitudes. But what it can do is it can set a tone, I think a critical tone in our city of acceptance. Three years ago, when council voted on the six words, gay marriage was legal in six states. But now, that number is 50. With gay weddings at Hemming Plaza, ironically right by City Hall and council chambers. But in Jacksonville, a wedding on Saturday could mean your termination on Monday. 
some honeymoon. Look online at the latest survey from UNF's Public Opinion Research Lab, Jack Speaks 2015. Find the HRO question, and survey says 62% of Jacksonville residents either strongly or somewhat favor job protections for gays and lesbians. Only 27% say they're strongly or somewhat opposed. I think it's a case where our laws are out of step with our people. People here are fair, and we should have laws that reflect that. Nevertheless, that opposing 27%, outspoken even if outnumbered, countered the six words with what could be called the seven objections. Objection one, gays don't deserve special rights. Well, turns out those so-called special rights don't impact only gays and lesbians. Well, I can turn the tables in my business. Jerry Rosenberg, a Jacksonville business owner who's gay. I could fire an employee for being straight. I don't know, I would never do that. But he could. Remember that all-embracing phrase, sexual orientation. Legally, that encompasses both gay and straight. Leave it out of the HRO, and straights become vulnerable, too. A gay employer could fire a straight employee because he or she is straight. Absolutely. And there, there's nothing to prevent that. Objection two. Plenty of protections for gays and lesbians already exist. Well, not really. The state of Florida doesn't have any law. There is currently no federal law. True, 18 states now prohibit job discrimination against gays, lesbians, and transgender, but Florida's not among them, and that long-awaited federal law never passed. Yet the mythology perseveres that widespread protection is out there somewhere. That was a common reaction from many, many people. Well, there's a federal law. No, that federal law hasn't passed. There's a state something. No, the state hasn't moved on this. <laughs> Objection three, no need for more regulation. File a lawsuit instead. Well, like they say. Anybody can file a lawsuit. But in Jacksonville, a judge would dismiss a lawsuit like this, toss it out. You can only file a lawsuit if there is a statute that protects you. And with no six words in the HRO, that protection does not exist. So while I may go to the courthouse and pay my $500 filing fee and maybe retain a lawyer and put myself through the court process, the result is going to be a negative one because I don't have the right to sue. Objection four. So then, if the six words permit the right to sue, pity the predicament of our poor courthouse, soon to be clogged and congested. Well, likely not. There has not been a flood of lawsuits in any other jurisdiction, whether in Florida or anywhere in the country. What's more, a revised HRO could offer a resolution that avoids the courts altogether. The right to make a complaint to the Jacksonville Human Rights Commission. The HRC, the local authority already resolving discrimination complaints regarding age, race, national origin, and the rest, adds sexual orientation to the list, and the commission could arbitrate those cases too, no courthouse needed. Objection five, all this is noise about nothing. Gays and lesbians kicked out of jobs, homes, restaurants, just doesn't happen. Well, seems that maybe it does, although no one knows how often. Our Human Rights Commission does not keep those kind of statistics. It can't. Right now, the commission's officially preempted from documenting discrimination based on sexual orientation. Without the six words. There's no legislation that they have to enforce so they don't keep a track of that. So what's left? Stories, anecdotes. But even then, those are tales nearly no one wants to tell, not publicly. You're ever you're talking about discrimination, many times people will not go on the record. Another catch-22. A lot of the people who might speak out, because they don't have protections, they can't. Being on this documentary could, could end my career, theoretically. But here's someone who did go on the record, David Vandegrift, seven years a Jacksonville resident. I was a medical sales rep. Apparently a good one. Voted by my peers, salesperson of the quarter. But then, he said, a client complained. The surgeons said they did not want to work with a gay sales rep. How did the surgeons know you were gay? We were in the operating room during a procedure, and the surgeon started asking me, do I have a girlfriend? Am I married? Do I have kids? Frankly, it's really nobody's business. My girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, kids really has no relevance. 
But that operating room conversation, Vandegrift said that's how he got fired. Not because of sales, not because of knowledge, because the surgeons didn't want to work with a gay sales rep. Not uncommon, according to local attorneys. Dozens of people have come to me and said, Jimmy, I lost my job because I was gay. Something an employer can find out rather easily. A coworker prints out a Facebook page to confirm somebody's relationship, or the person who they hired long ago is gay, suddenly they discover. I get contacted quite frequently. Objection six, that phrase, gender identity or expression, that's a problem. Well, at first, even supporters of the six words had to school themselves. What is gender identity? What does that mean? What's it encompass? We get the L and the G and the B, but what's T? In a word, T is for transgender. In a sentence, I'm literally trapped in the wrong body. In the U.S., approximately 700,000 identify as transgender. One of them, Preston Haskell's cousin. Yes, I have a first cousin. He was a woman trapped in a man's body. And then, fortunately, in the last few years, discovered that he could do something about it. And he did. And she today lives a very happy life as a woman. I'm quite happy for her and how she was able to realize her real personality, her real sexuality. Still, even with all the recent news... Most people don't know someone who's transgender. I had never even met someone who was transgender until just a few years ago. So meet one now, B.J. Arnold, Jacksonville resident. You are transgender. Correct. You are female to male. Female transitioning to male. Correct. He knew early on, told his mom, she came around. She says, I love you for who you are, not what you are. But even with the parents on his side, growing up T in the 80s embodied a scary and singular struggle. 30 years ago, nobody was talking about transgender. No, not on the west side. <laughs> <laughs> Reasonable to say trans people put up with a lot. The name calling, the bullying, the abuse. It may be um, a question of waking up one day and saying, I can't, I can't take it anymore. I cannot live a lie. BJ began transitioning 15 years ago. It changes your appearance, your voice. It's almost like regrowing your bones. I mean, that's what it felt like. So when you started seeing these changes in the mirror... I felt more comfortable, I guess. But what makes so many straights uncomfortable... Yes. Yes, the, the bathroom, you know, the, the bathroom issue. Uh, <laughs> there's no emotion that's more raw. Pastor Jeff Burnsett of Jacksonville's Coral Ridge Baptist Ministries. I've talked to women, for example, who are terrified. One girl, Terry Parker High School, she said, I'm scared to death. I'm little, I am tiny, I am small. I don't want some man in the bathroom just like a woman coming in. I am scared. But trans people already use public restrooms anyway, apparently without incident. And in cities with inclusive HROs, there's no change. In the places where we've passed ordinances like this, we haven't seen any kind of uptick in, you know, bathroom-related sex crimes. For his part, BJ reports nothing eventful aside from one awkward moment. The guy kind of looked at me because I was sitting there waiting for the stall to open up, and it's like, what? You know, and then he just kind of go, okay, you know. And that put the lid on it. Now the final and foremost objection. The largest driver, I think, of most of these discussions is religion. But if religion is the driver, Councilman Warren Jones is the guy who got run over. He sponsored that 2012 bill to add the six words. Did you catch some flack? Uh, yeah, I, I, I did. I got some calls. People were disappointed that I had wanted to do something they thought was un. Christian life. He wasn't the only one who got an earful. Some in the religious community put a lot of pressure on the council. Jacksonville attorney Jimmy Midget. There is a tradition in Jacksonville of the church having what I would consider to be an exaggerated effect on public policy, but it has no place in the crafting of the law because of the constitutional wall of separation between church and state. But in Jacksonville, that wall, while it doesn't exactly go tumbling like the wall of Jericho, it occasionally is trembling. While we have a separation between church and state, there's certainly no separation between church and politics. 
Consider this opinion piece published by the Times Union before Council's vote and credited to Mac Brunson, senior pastor of the prominent and powerful First Baptist Church. 28,000 members with a massive main campus covering nine blocks of downtown. The revised HRO, wrote Brunson, attempts to confine a Christian's faith to the four walls of the church, requiring Christians to subordinate their faith to the dictates of government steered by a rabid minority. Brunson declined our interview request. But Pastor Ted Corley did not. You don't dislike gay people, do you? No. Corley is Southern Baptist, a Jacksonville resident about 30 years, a minister even longer. I would never meet someone and say, are you gay? That's none of my business. But he's unequivocally opposed to the six words. You're asking people to openly contradict the Word of God. I don't believe that those are protected civil rights. Do you believe that homosexuality is a choice? Yes, I do. I, I don't believe people are born homosexual or lesbian. I believe it's a choice. Does one choose to be straight? Well, no, I think that's the natural creation of man, to be straight, to be heterosexual. That's the way God created them. So all true Christians are straight? I would say so. Can same-sex attraction be changed? Well, I believe it can. The words homosexual and lesbian don't appear anywhere in the Bible. And Jesus, who spoke 2,026 words in the New Testament, is silent on the subject. Jesus has absolutely nothing to say about homosexuality. Jacksonville pastor Brock Adams. Homosexuality is not ever seen as a threat to Christian living, to Christian ethics, to Christian society. The evidence for that just does not exist in the New Testament. It does not exist in the Old Testament. This is a gross misappropriation of Scripture. Of the Bible's 31,000 verses, perhaps a half dozen address homosexuality. For even their women exchange the natural use of what is against nature, so lesbianism, women and women together. But all half dozen verses, including the one you just heard, are like so much else in the Bible, subject to wildly conflicting interpretations. One example. The word unclean, unclean spirits, uncleanliness. Unclean or some form thereof, found in Galatians, Ephesians, and Romans. You say the word unclean yes. refers to homosexuality. Homosexuality. It's a broad word. Very broad. It includes all this. Homosexuality, lesbianism, transgender, pedophile, anything that deals with the sexual sins. When Paul says unclean, is that what he's talking about, sexual sins? Not at all. When Paul talks about things being clean versus unclean, it's actually re referring to clean or unclean foods. I can't think of one instance in the New Testament where clean versus unclean refers to sexuality. Meantime, over in the Old Testament... The verse that's most popularly cited is Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. Warren Jones heard that good and plenty while taking those angry phone calls. Were they quoting Leviticus to you? Some were, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one famous passage. Oh, always. Don't lie with a man the way you lie with a woman. A verse that lesbians are very fond of citing. Fine, I won't. I'll only lie with women. But leaving that stipulation aside, the verse sounds unambiguous, unbending. But then read the next few chapters. The reality is that it comes in a larger context. That context, chapters 17 through 26 of Leviticus, also called the Holiness Code, was written approximately 2,400 years ago. The code presents a package of itemized prohibitions, sort of an executive summary of sins, condemning all kinds of conduct. Everything listed seems to share an equal weight. One sin as wicked as the next. And in that context, we have to ask, what are the other abominations? Here's just a few. Eating non-kosher food and having sex with a person of the same gender are equal in the eyes of the Bible. So for any of us who've had a ham sandwich recently, they are of the same level of offense. Touch a dead pig on Sabbath, which means, I guess, no 
college football on Saturdays. Having tattoos is prohibited? Yes, uh, yeah, putting ink, permanent ink on the body. Here's a few more from Jacksonville Minister Timothy Simpson. But you're not allowed to eat a bird that swoops, like an eagle or an osprey or a hawk. You're not allowed to eat a shrimp or a clam or a scallop. You cannot mix certain types of crops together. But you can't wear a cotton polyester shirt. Not having sex during menstruation. If a menstruating woman sits on a chair, the chair becomes unclean. Unclean dishes and the consumption of cheeseburgers, because that is a violation of holiness. You don't live like that, your, your spouse doesn't live like that, your parents, grandparents, nobody lives like that in this society. And I think most Christians recognize that, which is why 98.9% .9 of the Levitical code is ignored by Christians. Just the part about homosexuality. That's the part that they love. Why would we take a couple of verses out of context, out of their original language, out of their ancient orientation, and try to use them to keep other people from working or from having uh, acceptable housing. I couldn't imagine that someone's faith led them to believe that God was excited, that some people were excluded from basic civil rights because of their sexual orientation or identity. That's not the God of the Bible. That's not the God I know. There's a disturbing sidebar to the HRO flap, something seldom discussed and difficult to calculate. The discouragement, the despair, and ultimately the departure of the city's young people. If you're a gay person and you're growing up and you're deciding where do I want to go with my life, are you going to pick Jacksonville? The first thing they want to do is figure out how do I get out of Jacksonville. A non-inclusive HRO is only part of the problem. For young people in particular, the six words are emblematic of an even larger dilemma. The cultural, the social, the political climate is much too stifling. And not just for young gays and lesbians. But also straight young people who want a much more inclusive environment, who want a place where diversity is not just tolerated, but actually appreciated and nurtured. So they go someplace else. Orlando. Atlanta and Tampa. Can you blame them? No. I try to encourage them to stay, though, because I think this is a city worth fighting for. When did he come out to you? He came out officially 21 years ago. Sandy Bond is talking about Frank, her stepson. Frank grew up in Jacksonville during the 70s and 80s. In this town at that time, he would not have known really anybody openly gay and wouldn't have had any examples to follow or anybody to talk to. When Frank was 25, he moved to London to get his PhD. Not surprisingly, he found London more open, more accepting. That's not all he found. He met his partner, an Englishman, the first week he went to England in 1992. He has since become a psychologist. He was head of his department of psychology in London at the Goldsmith College, University of London. He's done very, very well. My heart goes out to anybody trying to make their way here now. Although now, at least, gay kids in Jacksonville can find solace, support, companionship, camaraderie, here at Jasmine, a nonprofit serving the city's LGBTQ kids. Kids from 13 to 23, a variety of ages and classes and races and faith backgrounds. Young people who are really struggling, largely because of family rejection and harassment and bullying. Indeed, about 30% of Jasmine kids are runaways or throwaways. We see kids show up at our door with a bag on their back whose parents said, fill this bag, get out of this house, don't come back because you're gay and I'm not tolerating it. I think parents in this community hear really harsh messages about homosexuality from the pulpit, from their faith communities, and so they often react out of fear and often ignorance. That kind of hostility and rejection has a tremendous impact on young people. And even without it, even under better circumstances, even with reasonably understanding parents and some friends and a support group, 
coming to terms with your sexuality while simultaneously coming out to your parents is excruciating and agonizingly lonely place. Are you out to your parents? Yes. When did you tell them? I actually didn't tell them. They found out one day while reading a journal. They read your journal? Mm -hmm. Me talking about guys at school that I had a crush on and whatnot, and they were just like, do you want to talk to us about it? They weren't extremely cheery about the whole idea, but basically they're just like, as long as I'm happy and healthy, then they're okay with it. I don't write in journals anymore. Your mom and dad are still around? Yes. Do they know you're gay? Uh, they don't, I don't think. I mean... <laughs> Why don't you tell them? <sighs> yeah, part of it is, I guess, um... If you told them, do you think they would kick you out? Um, I take into account that there's a chance I didn't know exactly how to say it, so I just texted it out. And... What did you say? Um, <laughs> that it's not a girl. <laughs> did you come out to your parents? My mother, yes. My father, no, because my father lives in Oklahoma. I don't want to do it like over Facebook or over the phone. I would rather be face to face with them. How do you think he's gonna react? Honestly, I do not know. She doesn't approve of the lifestyle, but she accepts it because I'm her son. How did you come out to her? Funny story. On the bridge. We were on the bridge in traffic, moving. Matthews Bridge? It was the Matthews Bridge. That longest drive of my life. But <laughs> she asked me, I heard there's a rumor going around saying that you're gay. Is this true? Well, I didn't want to lie to my mother. So I told her, yes, it's true. She was angry. She was more upset at the fact that I didn't tell her that she had to hear it from someone else. But you got home without her driving off the bridge. Yes. <laughs> she did want me to tell my pastor. How did that talk with the pastor go? Better than I thought. Better than I thought. You just said, you know, if people don't agree with your lifestyle, f them. And I kid you not, I was shocked. He really said that? He did best pastor I've had. I was like, okay, all right. A footnote. That UNF survey mentioned earlier unequivocally shows Jacksonville's young people overwhelmingly support protections for gays and lesbians. Among those 18 to 24, more than 93 percent. Do you think you'll stay in Jacksonville? No. You gonna stay in Jacksonville? No. No. Are you going to stay here? <laughs> I've thought about that before. For me, it's more so the message that's being sent out. It's basically saying that your safety doesn't really matter. It's a hard pill to swallow. Don't play with God. My four children, they can't understand why we wouldn't have basic human rights for every citizen. Okay in the USA. They ask the question, is this a city where I want to raise my family, where I want to have children? and live the rest of my life. I want my kids to stay in Jacksonville. I want them to have kids and my great-grandchildren that I'm gonna know someday. But they've gotta believe we're a city that is moving forward, that we're not stuck in ancient history. I'm confident it'll change. The only thing I don't know is how fast it'll change. History is on our side. The tide is moving. But that turning tide carries a pervasive and powerful undertow. There seem to be two societies in Jacksonville. There's a small, very progressive society, but it's somewhat overwhelmed by a much more conservative society. It's kept the community back in many ways. In fact, there are times that it seems like Jacksonville is still in the 1950s. You're looking at the latest MEI, Municipal Equality Index, produced by the Human Rights Campaign and analyzed by most corporations looking to move somewhere. 
353 cities are surveyed. They win points if they promote gay-friendly, diversity-rich policies. 100 is the perfect score. Plenty of municipalities make it. Other cities, while not perfect, do pretty well, scoring in the 80s and 90s. And then Jacksonville, with a score of 20. Way below the other large cities in Florida. And with the lowest score of the 50 largest cities in the U.S. Not only does Jacksonville stand alone, now it stands out. A reputation that we don't need. It is something that we can easily rectify. It's simply going to take our city council and our mayor stepping up and saying enough. But in 2012, city council said something else. And the mayor said as little as possible, at least in public. Still, Jacksonville got off kind of easy. Sure, word got out, but not that much. Next time council brings it up. If we were to bring it up a second time and it were not to pass, I think the message it would send would be horrific. With perhaps equally horrific consequences. The issue is going to be, will some of these companies do a public boycott and say we're not going to expand or move into Jacksonville until this is addressed? Do you think that's a possibility? Yes, I do think it's a possibility. Like the state of Indiana, its so-called religious freedom bill provoked precisely that. Within hours of passage, boycotts began, and Indiana backtracked, humbled and humiliated. This legislation speaks to our human decency and not our views on sexual politics. It speaks to inclusivity rather than persecution. And it speaks to a moral responsibility to make our community a safe place. As a potential boycott lurks, like a shark in the water, one might glance above the surface and reflect on this now iconic image, a water taxi puttering along the river. Then take note of the sign at the back of the boat. Consider these five words, a prescription, a plea, or a prophecy. Let's just hope they don't become our legacy. <laughs>